Why are people fascinated with things that are impossible? Uh, let's talk just quickly about aliens and UFOs before we get into Moses and his locusts. Um, a lot of people think that a UFO is something that comes from another planet. It doesn't. There are unidentified flying objects and those are things, and the word says it, it's an object that has been flying in your path of sight and you don't know what it is. So we call it an unidentified flying object. And if we stop to think about reality, which is always a good thing because otherwise you might start thinking there really are aliens and there really are UFOs. And that's just as much a paranoia as thinking that the Bible is true. And it's a very, I mean, it's like watching television and thinking that you need a particular underarm deodorant. You don't need any underarm deodorant. It's, it's nonsense. You can wash your armpits once in a while. Anyway, um, we know by looking in uh, telescopes or whatever they use these days that the closest planet to us that has any signs of significant life is 200 million light years away so that means if you're traveling at the speed of light you can get there in 200 million years and that would be the same for them as well if there happened to be a life form there that was as smart as us and the chances are not very good because if there was I mean it might be but they're more than likely going to go and put life on other planets before they do a long journey of 200 million light years because probably any ship that's traveling through space would be going not even half that speed maybe a like a tenth of that speed and it's just impractical to go 200 million light years so the chances that aliens would skip out from their solar system and go through all the others and just leave without starting life where, wherever they are is just about impossible because the first thing we would do would put life on the moon and life on Mars and and w when there's enough life you can see it it changes the color of the light it, you, there's a green tinge or, tinge or whatever but you can definitely see when there is life on a planet and more than likely when life becomes somewhere different besides the planet where it originates the intelligent life will go slowly from planet to planet any place that can support whatever technology we have to help us I mean with the right amount of technology we can put life just about anywhere I mean I wouldn't suggest Mars or Venus but I mean um, Mercury or Venus but Mars and the moon for sure and I mean we've just built places but anyway don't think that UFOs are real I mean it's it's mind fuck it's like thinking that television is real television is always wrong if I saw something I have wait a second <laughs> I was in somebody's house yesterday and they were gone and the kids were in bed so um, I was watching that thing called TV which I like to do oh, as little as possible but I end up doing it probably once every couple of months and last night was one of those nights and my thumbs are still a little sore from zapping through anyway I saw this one idiot and he went into a place uh, where they do gambling and he did a thing where he said, look it, I'm going to, oh, I don't really do this because it's not my style, but I'll do it once to show the camera. And he puts his money on the 18, and then the 18 turns up, and I'm not sure how many idiots would believe that he really did it, but, I mean, it's so obvious. Maybe he's trying to teach us that it's obvious. You, you do one clip, and then you do another clip, and you put the first one behind the the... the second one so that you get the second one being the first one and there you go I mean it's simple enough and why UFOs would be propagated by the media well there are lots of reasons for that and one of the reasons of course is to keep you from visualizing reality for some reason you have been taught not to visualize what is real and well, the reason is so that you can be subordinate, so that you can be a believer and have lots of fear. And if you fear aliens 
Well, get some therapy. And if you fear God, you also need therapy. Okay, well, let's skip on right down to verse 2. How I made mockery of the Egyptians. Well, this is true. This is very true. I mean, the story isn't true, but there is no doubt that the Holy Scriptures, the Old Testament, Moses, the Moses story, makes mockery of the Egyptians. And maybe they were just trying to mock the fact that the Egyptians had this concept of God. Their concept of God was something to do with the sun and the pharaohs were, had God in them and whatnot. I mean, of course, whatever they believed was wrong. But the, the point is very clear, in this verse at least, that not only were these um, horrendous pestilence and signs of God, I mean, they weren't real, but they're really written. And they were really written and always mocking Israel, saying how, not Israel, they were written for Israel so that Israel could be a leader of countries and lands and might and whatnot. And Egypt was made mockery of. And there is no doubt that 3,000 years ago, Egypt was a lot better off than they are now. And, ah, uh, 